Sup, chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you all enjoyed your tofurkeys this Thanksgiving. So recently, thanks to one of my viewers, it has come to my attention that a well-known bro scientist named Miss Zero Zero One has decided for some strange reason that he has nothing better to do with all of his time, and so in the past couple of weeks or so, he has been spamming a post he wrote on various websites and subreddits where the subject of hair loss gets brought up frequently. And this includes Reddit's own infamous Tressless subreddit, as well as on a website called looksmax.org, which from what I can see seems to be a website about a bunch of horny young men sharing tips on how to best slay some poontang. The post in question that this Miss 001 guy keeps copying and pasting all over the dregs of the internet is titled, quote, Warning about finasteride, neurosteroids, and Alzheimer's disease, unquote. The bottom line of the post is that he tries to link the use of finasteride to the development of Alzheimer's disease, which is a terrible form of dementia. So I really don't know why this guy is so determined to spread fear about finasteride to the point that he's registered accounts on several different forms and subreddits just so he can copy and paste his bullshit post about finasteride and Alzheimer's disease, but I imagine his motivations are the same as every other finasteride-hating fear monger out there on the internet, which is that he's too dickless to use finasteride himself, and therefore by spreading fear about the drug to convince him himself and others that the drug's dangers outweigh the benefits, that's his way of coping with his decision not to use it since his balls haven't dropped yet. So the first time I heard about this post was when one of my viewers linked it from a Reddit post, but it seems like since then that Reddit post has disappeared, and I imagine it probably has something to do with the fact that Miss 001 himself deleted it since he had a lot of people calling out his bullshit that he couldn't defend, and so therefore he ran off like a giant pussy. But as of the time I am making this video, it looks like at least the look Max post of this thread still exists. Now, normally, I don't pay much attention to posts on a site like Tressless because it is hard to take a community seriously when the most popular post in the subreddit's 11-year history is a post from some guy claiming he discovered broccoli can cure hair loss. And if you want to know more about that, I'll go ahead and link the video uh, where I talk about that particular subject below. But getting back on point, this post from Miss 001 about Alzheimer's has been brought up by several of my viewers. So I initially just responded to it in a comment in a recent community post because, to be honest, this Alzheimer's post seems so ridiculous that it was hard to take it seriously, and I couldn't even imagine a, a subreddit like Tressless would even take it seriously. I was ready just to ignore this idiotic post altogether. However, this Miss 001 guy decided to make things personal. You see? In the comment section to the post on the LooksMax site, one of the users there countered Miss 001's post by bringing up my video on neurosteroids. And I was like thinking to myself, hell yeah, here comes the Calvary. And I was very flattered that my material was being used to counter this kid's bullshit. So I was hoping the original poster, Dr. Miss 001, would show some integrity at this point and admit that maybe he drew the wrong conclusions from his research. Instead of doing that though, he decided to criticize another one of my videos on finasteride and neurosteroids. Specifically, what he did was reprint this graph here from my video, which he claims I misinterpreted. So in other words, he's accusing me of either not having done my homework or even worse, lying. This will not stand. I'll catch you for this! You won't escape my wrath! It turns out everything he says about me is just projection though, because he is the one totally missing the point of that graph, and all he accomplished with this post was demonstrating to everybody his scientific illiteracy and complete ignorance. Miss 001, if you're watching, you've done pissed me off here, son, not because you don't share the same views as me, that's fine, but rather because you are attacking my integrity by accusing me of doing faulty research. If you hadn't done that, I would have properly ignored you, but since you decided to make things personal, I am going to take pleasure in tearing your amateurish pseudo-intellectual bro science Alzheimer's post to absolute pieces. But before I do, I do want to thank you because as pissed off as I am that you attacked me in my video, your post still gave me a good foundation to talk about the subject of finasteride and Alzheimer's, which affords me the opportunity to educate my viewers on this particular subject by scientifically dismantling everything you said. Anyways, given the fact that my video is being misinterpreted to support the ridiculous and outright fraudulent hypothesis hypothesis that finasteride causes Alzheimer's disease somehow, I am going to show you that there is absolutely no evidence whatsoever that finasteride causes Alzheimer's disease. It is complete fear-mongering, and the only impressive thing about this post from Miss 001 is that he somehow managed to avoid drowning in his own saliva while he wrote it. So let's take Miss 001's argument point by point. He starts out with this, quote, 
Finasteride reduces the amount of a neurosteroid called allopregnanolone in the blood markedly. This is a fact. See table, unquote. He then shows this table here. Now, I've done several videos on the effects of finasteride on neurosteroids, and in particular, the neurosteroid allopregnanolone. And I'll link all of those videos below. What allopregnanolone is, though, it is a steroid hormone that is synthesized via several steps, one of which involves the 5-alpha reductase pathway, or 5-AR enzyme, that finasteride blocks, as you can see right here. Allopregnanolone affects a neurotransmitter called GABA in the brain and can affect the functioning of neurons in the brain. So, before looking at the table, Ms. 001, one posted, let's look at the study the table actually came from. It's this study from the Czech Republic published in 2009 titled, quote, Finasteride Treatment and Neuroactive Steroid Formation, unquote. In the study, 20 men with benign prostatic hyperplasia were given finasteride at 5 mg per day for 4 months. Now, 5 mg per day is the normal dose for treating benign prostatic hyperplasia, but it is 5 times the normal dose for treating androgenic alopecia. Anyways, Blood hormone levels were measured before and after four months of treatment with finasteride at 5 mg per day. This table here shows the results. Of note, the serum DHT level decreased from an average of 1.048 to 0.121 nanomoles per liter with finasteride. Serum allopregnanolone levels decreased after four months of finasteride use from an average of 0.159 to 0.042 nanomoles per liter. So, MIS-001 doesn't mention it, but the same researchers repeated essentially the same study with 12 men who had androgenic alopecia and who received one milligram per day of finasteride. In that study, serum DHT levels dropped about 50% over a total of 12 months. Allopregnanolone levels also fell progressively over 12 months. The decrease at 4 months was not as great as what was seen with using 5 milligrams per day, but there was definitely a progressive drop in allopregnanolone levels. So, the researchers from the Czech Republic concluded that from these two studies, that finasteride lowers serum, serum allopregnanolone levels, and that since low allopregnanolone is associated with depression, then finasteride might cause depression through this mechanism. So, wouldn't that mean that Miss 001 one is correct to say that it's a fact that finasteride lowers allopregnanolone levels? Well, not so fast, Chooms. Let's use the critical thinking skills that Miss 001 lacks by shifting gears to think about DHT for a moment. Let me ask you all a question. What's more important for your hair, serum DHT or scalp DHT? That's a rhetorical question because of course it's scalp DHT. As it turns out, scalp DHT is higher than serum DHT because DHT is what's known as a paracrine hormone. That means it acts on tissues where it is produced. DHT is produced in the hair follicles by the 5-air enzymes, and that enzyme converts testosterone into DHT, and DHT acts on those follicles to destroy them if you have the genetics for androgenic alopecia. Likewise, DHT is produced locally in the prostate and acts on the prostate to enlarge it, and that makes it difficult to pee when you get older. DHT in the blood is essentially just an overflow of DHT uh, from this local production, and really doesn't do anything because the levels are far too low. This is in contrast to a true endocrine hormone like testosterone, for instance, which is produced in the adrenal glands and the testes and circulates through the body to act remotely on our muscles to build them up and prevent us from looking like Jason Blaha. Well, that's fascinating, Kevin, but what's all this have to do with allopregnanolone, you might ask? Well, allopregnanolone is synthesized in the adrenal glands and the gonads, but the most important place it is synthesized by far is in the brain because allopregnanolone in the brain acts locally on neurons. Allopregnanolone levels in the blood are not the same as allopregnanolone levels in the brain, just like how blood DHT levels are not the same as scalp DHT levels. So, to show that allopregnanolone levels in the blood don't reflect the levels in the brain, let's look at this study here. The study looked at allopregnanolone levels in people with epilepsy. It looked at both allopregnanolone levels in the blood and in the cerebral spinal fluid, also known as CSF, which is the fluid inside our skull. Allopregnanolone in the CSF is the allopregnanolone produced by the brain. When the patients in the study had repeated seizures, the allopregnanolone levels dropped in the cerebral spinal fluid significantly, as you can see in the top panel of this figure right here, while at the same time the serum allopregnanolone levels didn't change as you can see in the bottom figure. So the point is, is that serum and brain allopregnanolone levels are independent of each other, and if finasteride decreases the serum allopregnanolone levels, it doesn't mean that it also decreases the brain allopregnanolone levels. We know that serum allopregnanolone comes from multiple sources, including sources outside of the brain, and these sources could be blocked by a 5-AR inhibitor like finasteride. But does finasteride 
also block the 5-AR enzyme in the brain and decrease brain allopregnanolone? Well, finasteride predominantly blocks the type 2 5-AR isoenzyme, but it turns out allopregnanolone in the brain is synthesized only by the type 1 5-AR isoenzyme, as you can see from this quote from the review article on allopregnanolone from 2020. Quote, Allopregnanolone and THDOC are synthesized in the brain from progesterone or deoxycorticosterone, respectively, by the sequential action of two enzymes, 5A reductase type 1 and 3A hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase, unquote. That's right. Allopregnanolone in the brain is dependent on the type 1 5A isoenzyme, and I went over this in more detail in a video that I'll link below. The reason this is important is because, like I said, finasteride is predominantly a blocker of the type 2 5A isoenzyme, and it has only a negligible effect on the type 1 5A isoenzyme. Now, in rats, Finasteride is a strong blocker of both the type 1 and type 2 isoenzyme, which is why you can't extrapolate the effect of finasteride on rat neurosteroids to humans. But in actual human beings, finasteride's blockade of the type 2 isoenzyme would have no effect on brain neurosteroid levels, even if it did lower neurosteroid produced outside of the brain. This is where Miss 001 brings up my video and objects to my interpretation of this graph here. The graph shows 5AR activity in the brain tissue. The filled in squares are controlled. Control. The open circles are finasteride, and the filled in circles are a selective type 1 5AR blocker called MK386. Miss 001 draws some red lines on the graph and writes weak effect, as well as JFL, which is looks max lingo for just fucking LOL. He writes in a comment, please explain to me how the graph is showing a weak effect. 5 year activity reduces massively in the brains of finasteride users. This is the graph that Miss 001 totally misinterprets. He acts like this is some kind of clinical study in human subjects, and gee, look how much finasteride decreases 5 year activity in the brain. I is so smart. Except it's not a study of the effect of finasteride in the brains of finasteride users. Here is the study this link comes from. And here's what I said about this graph in the video I made about finasteride and neurosteroids. In this figure, the squares are control 5 air activity, the white circles are finasteride, and the black circles are MK386. Finasteride had only weak effects on 5AR, while MK386 shut down 5AR completely. If there was type 2 5AR in the brain, MK386 would not have shut down 5AR completely. The fact that finasteride had a small effect on 5AR was due to finasteride Dutasteride's very weak type 1 blocking activity, which remember is only 1 one hundredth of dutasterides. It had nothing to do with its effects on blocking the type 2 isoenzyme. So this graph comes from an experiment where high concentrations of MK386 and finasteride were added to preparations of human brain tissue in a test tube. The fact that MK386, which is a specific type 1 isoenzyme blocker, completely eliminated 5-air activity means that only type 1 5-air isoenzymes are present in the brain tissue. The fact that there was any suppression at all with finasteride was solely due to finasteride's very, very weak type 1 effects and the high concentration of finasteride used in the study. The finasteride concentration was 0.1 micromoles per liter, which is about 3 to 10 times the usual concentration of finasteride in the blood in finasteride users. And it is likely that finasteride levels in the brain are even much lower than this during normal use. This experiment doesn't reflect at all what finasteride does to the brain of people taking finasteride for hair loss. The investigators concluded, quote, in the present study, we were able to provide strong biochemical evidence for the predominant, if not exclusive, activity of the 5A reductase type 1 isoenzyme in the human brain by determining the inhibitor sensitivity of the in vitro reaction. Unquote. So, I spent a lot of time here debunking just the first part of Miss 001's post, but I thought it was important to show that there is no hard data showing any effect of finasteride on brain neurosteroids in human beings. Neurosteroids in the brain are synthesized only by the type 1 5-AR isoenzyme, and finasteride is only a very, very weak blocker of the type 1 isoenzyme. Blood neurosteroid levels do not reflect brain neurosteroid levels, so the data he quotes is not relevant, and rodent studies of finasteride effects on brain neurosteroids are completely worthless because finasteride acts as a strong type 1 and type 2 isoenzyme blocker in rodents, unlike in human beings where it only affects the type 2 enzyme to any significant degree. Also, the studies involving rodent use, the doses are dozens or hundreds of times higher than what a human being would use. So I could end right there, but it turns out the rest of his post is complete bullshit too. First of all, he claims that low allopregnanolone level 
levels is a cause of Alzheimer's disease. Although there are some studies showing low allopregnanolone levels in the brains of Alzheimer's patients, it's certainly not clear at all that these lower levels are a cause or an effect of having Alzheimer's disease. Remember, correlation is not causation. In fact, it's even possible allopregnanolone may be harmful to Alzheimer's disease patients. This is from the source that Miss 001 cites to back up his claims. Quote, the rationale behind evaluating allopregnanolone in Alzheimer's is that a combined regenerative and neuroprotective effect may counteract ongoing neuronal cell loss in this neurodegenerative disease. However, other studies have reported that allopregnanolone can impair learning function in two different AD mouse strains. Newer data indicates that continuous elevation of allopregnanolone in mice worsens amyloid loads and learning while intermittent dosing has opposite beneficial effects. Unquote. So it's not even clear that allopregnanolone will turn out to be a good treatment for Alzheimer's, and Miss 001 is just jumping to conclusions here. It is true that allopregnanolone is being looked at as a possible treatment for Alzheimer's disease, and there are studies of allopregnanolone for Alzheimer's disease going on right now, but the results of these studies aren't even in yet, other than some very preliminary phase 1 studies. So we don't know if allopregnanolone is even useful in treating Alzheimer's disease. Even if allopregnanolone does turn out to be an effective treatment, that doesn't mean it has anything to do with the cause of the disease. That would be like saying that since you treat pneumonia with antibiotics, that must mean pneumonia is caused by a lack of antibiotics. Miss 001 also seems to be very certain he knows exactly what causes Alzheimer's disease, and he knows a lot more than other actual scientists who maybe have studied the disease a lot longer than he has. Miss 001 very dogmatically says things like, Alzheimer's disease is the result of amyloid beta building up over decades. Fact, this subsequently leads to the development of tau tangles in the brain, which is ultimately what causes the death of neurons in AD. Fact. Well, first of all, writing FACT in capital letters next to your point doesn't make it a fact. The cause of Alzheimer's disease is actually not completely known yet. There are genetic factors and probably environmental factors involved. Also, it looks like a lot of the research that shows that Alzheimer's is due to a buildup of a protein called amyloid beta in the brain is open to question because the researchers who published the key papers on this hypothesis may have actually faked the data. Yes, papers like this one that Miss 001 quotes as fact may have fake data. Notice the disclaimer on this article. Yes, the images in this article and other articles by the same author contain duplications and alterations that throw the whole amyloid beta theory that Miss 001 is so confident about into very deep doubt. So I could go on, but this post by Miss 001 is just another, but I did my own research style post that totally misinterprets the data and comes to completely unjustified conclusions. Conclusions. There is no clinical data linking finasteride to Alzheimer's disease, and the theoretical data Miss 001 presents is completely wrong too, as I've already shown. Hell, even dutasteride is 100 times stronger at suppressing the 5-AR type 1 isoenzyme compared to finasteride, and it has been around for years, and even dutasteride has never been linked to Alzheimer's disease. This post was astonishingly bad. It looks like something that came out of the Ray Pete forums, I kid you not, but it's actually even worse than that, since this post isn't just bad, it's also as particular pretentious as sin. Just reading this post and the way he keeps putting the word FACT in capital letters and in parentheses, you can tell this guy really thought he was doing some Mensa quality research here, even though he clearly just found a table online one day that went along with his biases against finasteride and then decided without a shred of clinical evidence that finasteride causes Alzheimer's disease. Finasteride and dutasteride have been around for decades, and no one has ever linked them to Alzheimer's disease, but thanks to this wannabe internet sleuth Miss 001, this great scientist scientific cover-up has been exposed and the truth is out. Yeah, fucking right. So, you know what, Miss 001? If you want to LARP around as some expert research on neurosteroids online, that is your business and I don't really give a shit. But don't pretend you understand any of this stuff better than I do. I actually go through the effort of putting proper research into my videos. You, on the other hand, just read the abstracts of articles you find agreeable and then invent your own conclusions to them. Now, of course, I am not claiming to be infallible here. I have occasionally made mistakes before on my channel, too. But if you want to trash on my work, then come better prepared next time, asshole. Sound good? Cool. Now get the fuck off my channel. God bless.